There are still details to be worked out with the provinces on the deal announced by the uh, Prime Minister today to boost those wages. Uh, guided by this principle, he said, if you're making minimum wage to put your health at risk for other Canadians, you deserve a raise and you're about to get one. The question is who exactly will qualify. Prime Minister is saying that will be up to the provinces to decide. And they'll also decide how much the wages will rise in different parts of the country. So it sounds like it'll be a patchwork of eligibility requirements uh, determined by the provinces and a patchwork of increases. And when asked, the Prime Minister didn't say that there will be guidelines for how the money should be spent. All right, let's follow up on this with uh, my next guest to uh, get some reaction to the announcement the Prime Minister has made today. She joins me from Toronto. Charlene Stewart is the president of the Service Employees International Union. It represents some 60,000 frontline health care workers in the province of Ontario. As you can see, she's with me now to discuss the Prime Minister's announcement of this deal uh, with the province. Is still uh, details, Charlene Stewart, to be worked out on increasing wages of essential workers during the pandemic. Um, what's your reaction to what you heard from the Prime Minister? Well, I mean, um, it was good news, obviously. Uh, these workers across our country who are precarious workers and um, suffering from extremely low wages and being called upon uh, to put their lives at risk, and I would add their families' lives as well. So, of course, it's good news. But, again, I'm extremely concerned over some of the stuff that wasn't identified. Uh, we had encouraged the Prime Minister to have the money flow directly to the workers, as he did in the CERB, because uh, I have very little confidence in uh, the mm -hmm. a smooth transition from the federal government to the provincial government and into the hands of the employers who are uh, expected to put it in the front line. Uh, recently in Ontario, the uh, Ford government announced the $4 pandemic wage increase for essential service workers in healthcare and long-term care. And we are still trying to figure out the logistics of that. Uh, there were so many classifications excluded that shouldn't be. Uh, the workers have not seen the $4 on their wages yet. They don't know when they're going to get it. Uh, it's just a uh, really complicated, and that was what I was fearful of, and I'm afraid that's what you're going to see expanded into the other provinces as well. Okay, so when you say it would have been better to have the money flow directly to the workers, how, how, how would that be an easier process of identifying who should get it? If we see all these classifications in Ontario, uh, how would the federal government determine who to flow the money to? Or else the provincial government could have flowed it directly from them. Uh, Already evidence in Ontario, uh, when you include the operational aspect of this, how we're going to get it through the employers, uh, absolutely it's caused a bunch of chaos and they still haven't received it. Or the employers could have uh, started giving the uh, pandemic pay and then build the government back for it. But uh, the levels of bureaucracy involved in this, uh, those workers aren't receiving it. And Ontario is a prime example of that. It's been two weeks and they have no idea when they're going to get this pay. Uh, give me an idea of who the workers are that you represent uh, to help our audience understand who when, when people everybody talks about workers in long-term care homes and other frontline essential workers but um, tell me more about them who are they uh, they range from hospital workers of course you know uh, registered practical nurses uh, uh, frontline workers there dietary workers in there uh, some of the technicians uh, long-term care personal support workers food services and support services community services all the way from mental health institutions or, or facilities to home care as well who go into the homes and uh, take care of clients in their own homes are you satisfied that um, the, are you satisfied provinces will will see the same list of people whose wages ought to be boosted that you see uh, are have, have the right people been identified uh, to try and help uh, fix this problem of frontline health health care workers being underpaid are we talking about the same people from a government level to a frontline level? Well, I question that because some of the exclusions in Ontario, we're asking them and still have not received uh, any replies in two weeks about some of the exclusions. Uh, you've got people who sterilize medical devices that are used, obviously, to treat uh, COVID-positive patients in hospitals, and they weren't included. Uh, frontline clerical and administrative staff that do uh, the admissions in the hospitals when they come in, they weren't included. I mean, what's the definition of an essential service worker? Is it the ones that are in contact with the COVID-infected uh, people in the province? Uh, I question, do they know what these people do? Because there's so many exclusions that, in our opinion, should have been in there. 
The conversation uh, when people talk about this measure, and you, you say it's a welcome measure today, the, the other conversation people have around it is uh, it's a pandemic response. And that leads to the question, of, okay, uh, we're trying to solve a problem in the middle of a pandemic, but what happens when the pandemic passes? By all accounts, these are these are temporary wage increases during a pandemic. Uh, so what will that mean for the system once the pandemic passes? Uh, does this fix it? Well, not if they're going to take it away, and that's what it sounds like it is. I mean, to give them a temporary living wage under the title of pandemic uh, pandemic pay, uh, we're, we're going to be lobbying that that becomes the regular wage for all workers. I mean, I obviously deal with the healthcare sector, but even for the prime minister to say that these are for people making minimum wage, how can a lot of these classifications be making minimum wage? That is uh, part of why we're in the crisis that we're in. That's why we're calling for inquiries into this. Uh, the precarious work in these jobs, the low wages has caused us to have a uh, pandemic of a staff shortage. So I am strongly going to encourage them to put this money there as permanent wages in these frontline workers. And again, there's an absence here that uh, in my uh, sector, there's a lot of for-profit corporations, and I would say in a lot of the service industries, that they need to step up and put a little bit more of their profits into these essential heroes and angels that we are recognizing wholeheartedly now. Their, do their jobs don't change when the pandemic's over. Maybe the immediate fear of a pandemic goes, but they should always remain essential workers. They should have the respect and dignity after the pandemic that they're all receiving now. Okay, a couple of things to finish on. There, it, it, the province of Ontario, you've talked about the $4 an hour increase for uh, some of the frontline workers there. We've seen uh, increases in Saskatchewan uh, or promised increases in Saskatchewan, province of Quebec, British Columbia. Would you have liked to have heard something from the Prime Minister today about uh, identifying a number? Uh, because it'll flow, but it could be $4 in Ontario, it could be, I suppose, two fifty dollars somewhere else. To, should there have been a, a, a wage uh, floor attached to this in the in the transfer of these funds? Well, I appreciate the challenges that the federal government has uh, because it's a you know, big country and the provinces do have, uh, I guess, a closer upfront look at what uh, needs to be done. Uh, maybe there's reasons for it to be uh, the decision of the provinces, but again, I say that we need to take a look at how much universal wages we need to take a look at across the province, especially health care. I mean, the federal government has been putting a lot of money, as we heard, into supporting provinces to support the frontline essential workers. But we need to take a look, and you know, the prime minister says it, the premiers say it, we need to take a look at the long-term care system. We need to have, I think, uh, regulations that might have to come down from the federal government, and maybe we take a look at universal regulations and pay going forward as well. Okay, let's finish on, on this area. There have been more than 1,000 deaths of residents, and, and there have been deaths of workers too, frontline workers. In, in involved in long-term care homes in Ontario. You, you've called for a public inquiry into what has happened in long-term care homes in the province of Ontario. Uh, why do you believe that inquiry is needed? Well, the numbers itself. And I say, you know, it's shameful that the union had to call on an inquiry that the premier hadn't said immediately, we need to look into this and we need to look into it now. The responses we got from the premier's office is not now. Your point, a thousand deaths, three frontline workers of PSWs, five in the healthcare system. When is the right time? Uh, something obviously went critically wrong. Uh, things are starting to come out public, like a lot of those deaths happened in for profit homes. We've always been uh, putting a light on the fact that those for profit homes uh, need to be examined by the government. Uh, there is obviously a rationale and a clear explanation as to why that was. The profits are always front of mind with those for profit homes. Uh, taking a look at the uh, marginalized workers, uh, you'll see that that's the predominant uh, uh, community in these long term care homes, as well as women. Uh, so you take a look at all of those things, and I'm saying that we should do it now. When is the right time, if not now? Uh, we did an inquiry in a commission on SARS here in Ontario when there was less than 50 deaths. Uh, when you add up the deaths in this province and the number of infections, this should have been done weeks ago. And as well, the SARS recommendations should have been definitely uh, considered and put into action, which they weren't as well. All of those questions need to be answered. Uh, these deaths are out. And to be the number one country... Out of 14 countries with these deaths, I mean, 
everyone should be calling on it, not just the union. The public should be demanding that an inquiry be done, be done immediately. Do you, do you, um, do you believe that there was there's there's any the possibility of any criminal charges that would be involved from an inquiry do, based on what's happened in some of these homes? Yes, we've asked for uh, criminal investigations to be done by both the Toronto Regional Police and the Peel Regional Police, and that may be the outcome that comes out of the coroner's, uh, our request for him to do an inquiry as well. All right, Charlene Stewart, uh, thanks so much for your time today and responding to what the uh, Prime Minister uh, has announced today, this deal to try and boost wages of frontline essential workers. Good to talk to you. Take care. We'll talk again. You too. My pleasure.